I'd like to do is show you how to graph this. And the way that I'm going to show you how to graph this is by, um, <clears throat> by using our transformations. So a lot of you might say, oh, well, uh, I can go and pick, uh, let's say I pick, why don't I use the table method? And the table method is usually what I always tell my students. Pick, you know, pick four or five points, right, and choose the table method. Well, when given an absolute value equation, that can be pretty difficult, difficult depending on what points you pick. Uh, if you guys look at this, uh, this graph, okay, um, has an x minus 4 plus 3 and 2. So let's pretend I was going to use the table method. And let's say I was just going to graph this. Now, we know that a regular graph without any alterations, f of x equals absolute value of x is right there, right? Not shift up and down, it has a vertex at 0, 0, and it goes up, has two points that we know which is 1 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 1, right? We actually know the rest of them. The slopes are 1 over 1 going to the um, infinity and negative infinity. But let's say I was going to go and pick two points, right? And let's say I just pick the points negative 1, 0, and 1. All right? And let's say I wanted to graph this equation. Well, if I did negative 1, negative 1 times negative 4 is a negative 5. Negative 5 absolute value is um, 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 3 is 13. 0. 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. Negative, absolute value of negative 4 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is uh, 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. So if I was to graph this equation, or if I was to graph this, I come up with the problem because negative 1 goes up to 13. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So negative 1 goes up to negative 13, 0 goes to 11, and 1 goes to 9. Well, that's a straight line, ladies and gentlemen, right? So I got a big issue with this one because it's giving me a straight line. I doesn't look anything like a V. So when see, when you see an absolute value function, a very easy way to graph this is to first find our vertex. So to do that, we know we need to know our transformations. And the transformations is f of x equals a times absolute value of x minus h x minus h plus 3. All right? where my h is going to tell me where to shift left or right and my plus three. and my k is going to tell me where to shift up or down. So if originally, without any alterations, I have my vertexes at 0, 0, if I go ahead and alter this now, I'm going to shift, I'm going to shift four units to the right. One, two, three, four. Right? That's going to, negative h tells me shift four units to the right. And then my three tells me shift three units up. One, two, three. So therefore now my new vertex is at um, 4 comma 3. All right, so you want to find your new vertex. So pretty much what I did was I just shifted this point to over here. Then now I can pick a point to the left and a point to the right. So now I'll pick, um, well, we already did negative 1, right? But let's see what you guys notice is I picked negative 1, 0, and 1. So I picked all these points right here. So we know those work. But now we need to pick a point to the right of my graph. So let's pick 5. So I'll do f of 5 equals 2 times x minus 5, or 5 minus 4, plus 3. Well, 5 minus 4 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So f of 5 equals 5. So let's go over 5 and then go up 5. 1, 2, 3. And there you go. You guys see how that works? So whenever you're graphing absolute value function, especially whenever you see um, a shift left or right, make sure you find the vertex first by using your transformations and then plug in points to the left and a point to the right of the vertex.